got a lot to cover today because we have, uh, I'm really excited um, for our guest speaker today, Dubravka. Um, so welcome everybody on this, uh, I'm in Ontario and Ottawa and it's not that sunny, but it's, it's really hot. So it's nice to be inside in air conditioning. Um, but thank you very, very much for taking the time on a Sunday afternoon to join us for another uh, one of the CBOC webinar series. Um, you might be asking, why Sunday? And why Sunday afternoon at two o'clock? Uh, well, um, we really wanted to share the wisdom and knowledge of uh, Dubrovka Martinovich with you, um, who is a FIBA or a sports psychologist who works for FIBA. And so Dubrovka lives in Umag, Croatia, which is six hours from us. So uh, right there, it's eight o'clock. Um, so that's why we're having this webinar at two in the afternoon. If we had it at our normal seven o'clock uh, at night, uh, Dubrovka would have been would have been keen, but she would have been half asleep. So uh, so we um, she agreed to do it for us on a Sunday, which we really appreciate. So listen. Um, before I introduce Dubrovka, just a couple things. Um, if you have questions for Dubrovka, I think we're saving about 15 minutes at the end uh, to um, ask your questions. And we'll try to get through as many as possible. I cannot promise that we'll get through all of your questions. Um, so uh, if you do have questions and I don't get through them, what I'll do is I'll compile them and I'll send it to Dubrovka, which I hope she doesn't mind. And uh, we can probably get answers to those questions and I can, we can post them on the CBOC game plan site. Okay, um, so I know there's uh, supposed to be a lot of people on this call today, so we might not get through all the questions. And I apologize ahead of time, but we'll do our best. All right, so um, again, send those to Nadine if you have questions. Let me introduce our good friend, Dubrovka. Dubrovka uh, Martinovic is a sports psychologist from Croatia. Uh, she works with athletes, coaches, and referees on individual performance enhancement and mental preparation programs. Dubrovka also works with sports teams on team cohesion development and performance analysis. From 2011 to 2018, Dubrovka was an official um, sports psychologist at FIBA summits and held workshops both on and off the court for players, coaches, and referees. Since about 2014, um, Dubrovka has been collaborating with FIBA. That's where Mike and I have known Dubrovka. I've worked with Dubrovka at about three uh, world championships and uh, um, the, what she brought to the team, to the crew, was insurmountable. Like, it, you know, it really changed the dynamics and also supported the referee. So it, it was great to have a sports psychologist on scene, on the court for each game. Dubrovka's also worked with FIBA Europe referee department as an associate at their clinics, seminars, and seasonal basketball events. During these events, Dubrovka helps the referees and instructors with team building, mental preparation techniques, very important, um, and performance analysis. So with referee instructors helping us um, uh, with the feedback after the games. Um, since 2015, Dubrovka has held seminars for many referee organizations in Croatia, Austria, France, uh, uh, other international places for FIBA and the International Wheelchair Basketball Federation. Dubrovka um, is also the author of a new book that came out this year in 2020, uh, The Introduction to Psychology and Human Nature. I hope everyone can see the book. Uh, I'm sharing my screen right now. 
Um, so this was just published hot off the press. Uh, I've read it. Great book. Um, and I'm promoting and plugging it here, Dvorka. So uh, hopefully people will, uh, referees will pick that up. All right. So without any further ado, I want to um, uh, first of all remind everybody to put your uh, speakers on mute um, so that we don't hear the background noise and uh, so we, we can hear all of what Dubrovka has to say. So Dubrovka, welcome to Canada. Thank you very, very much for taking the time and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, thank you and the uh, CBOC for invitation. It is my pleasure to be, like you said, with you on Sunday evening to present you some of my uh, knowledge working with, uh, with the referees. Okay, I hope that you now are able to see my presentation. Yeah? Super. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like Nadine, like Nadine said, uh, what is the job of sports ecologist in the officiating world? Uh, mainly, uh, I, I always divide this into two different uh, topics, during the season and before and during the tournaments, especially international tournaments. So during the season, it's more like coaching and mentoring and preparation uh, part of my job. Uh, to consult with the referees about their personal development of their development as a referees to be better better in some part of the, their preparation and during the tournaments it's uh, also really dynamic because during the pre-competition clinics and during the, the world champions for example uh, really important uh, job as a mental preparation and performance analysis and uh, uh, evaluation. For me, when I speak with the referees, when I compare referees with the uh, athletes and coaches, uh, for me, the referees are athletes. In a way, how they prepare, uh, how they prepare physically, how they put effort in their preparation overall, I always compare them with the athletes on a way how a uh, level of preparation and effort they put. So when we work uh, during the season, it's always uh, about personal best, their personal best, because as we all know, referees do not compete. Uh, they are not in any competition, but they are in a performance doing their best possible uh, during the games and during the tournament. So, you know, when we, when we speak about the preparation, it's always a lot about being best than yesterday and want to become even more in some area of my preparation better. Uh, referee as an athlete, uh, in a way how to prepare, there are really different uh, kind of preparation that we put in, in a program when working individually. And uh, one of the most, I will say, used technique that we used in, in a program for development uh, is imagery and visualization. Uh, it's also that combines all the, all the other techniques like arousal control, attention control training, um, pre-game preparation and everything for referees to, to be ready for the game and also to, to improve. Well, uh, this, this technique is also very useful now for you, uh, since we all know that sport, uh, <laughs> last, last games we had worldwide was in, in, in uh, February, so four months ago, and uh, really important for you to keep in shape uh, without games, live games to, to officiate uh, visualization and imagery as a technique can be very useful. Uh, also, one of the most important thing of the program is resilience training, since you know all of you know that being a referee, being an official is really stressful and to, to work on your resilience and to have this program it really, can be really beneficial. Okay, this is just about like 
I will say an introduction on uh, how I see the referees and how I approach working with them. Uh, today, topics will be officiating psychology from game control aspects. And I will also give you some few examples for, for, uh, from tournaments and then later or during the, my presentation, you can write your questions and I will be glad to, to answer it. Okay, when we speak about game control aspects, uh, for me, it's really important for, for you as a referee, also for the coach uh, to understand, you know, when we prepare for the game, think about what is your role and what is your responsibility. So even before I prepare for something to, 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 you know, to be aware, okay, what is my role during the game? What is my responsibility during the game? And uh, if we see the coach's role or player's role, uh, their role is, you know, to play according to the tactics, to put the, the best tactic possible to, to, you know, to be better than opponent, um, to perform well, to have a nice percentage of shooting, uh, have a good uh, percentage of assistance and so on. What is the goal of the coach and the player and the team? Both player player coaches and their teams want to win the game. This is their main goal, to be better than the opponent. And if we compare this with the referee's role and responsibility and referee's goal, it's totally different in one significant way. Coach player wants to uh, win because they compete and referee have to keep that competition fair and under control. You know, this is really important when we speak about preparation and when we speak about uh, how, how to see uh, the best way to prepare for the game. And when preparing for the game, also prepare for what emotions and behavior could occur during the game, because these are game control aspects. You know, if we are, if uh, our role if referee's role is to uh, and, and the responsibility is to keep the competition fair and under control using uh, regulations, using the ro uh, rules according to the rule book, then uh, it's important to expect uh, uh, some kind of, you know, uh, many, many kind of emotions and different kind of behavior. Uh, to occur during the game because competition itself can arise many emotions. You know, it's when we go to the theater, it's uh, something different than when we go to the arena. When we go to arena, we celebrate the basket, we celebrate the slam dunk, we celebrate three point shots, but also we are disappointed when our team lose uh, when there is, there is a turnover or whatever. And uh, uh, for the players and coaches, it's also really emotional because, you know, when the competition, uh, when there is a competition, there are emotions. So uh, also important for the referees, how these emotions that can uh, occur during the game can affect on game flow. How can I resolve them according to the rules? Uh, how can I prepare for this individually? How can I prepare my crew as a crew chief or as any part of the crew? And how to be objective and regain control when this situation occurs? You know, for the for players and coaches also work on self-control, uh, but in, in stressful situation in competition, uh, the more uh, they, they sometimes express their emotions in not so appropriate way. And for the referees is this higher level of preparation than for players and coaches, because again, they need to keep that competition fair and under control. So not to be judgmental, to be fair and not to show, not to be eaten by the emotions and, and possible behavior uh, that can happen. And 
if we say that game control have three aspects, main three aspects, I will, I will try to um, tell you about this more specific. Uh, it's about being aware what and when is happening. Uh, to be aware uh, what is happening. In, the, in some situation that that uh, may lead to emotions arise, some in, emotions, some complaints, some uh, undesirable uh, behavior. To understand why is this happening, and to know how to deal with this. This is really an important part of your preparation when preparing for the emotional and behavioral part of the game, uh, officiating psychology, let's say. Because uh, in one way you prepare also for your, you know, uh, crew communication, you prepare for your IOT, uh, you prepare for the specific of the game. And it's really important to put also the preparation of how will I handle if some situation happen uh, for the undesirable behavior and to understand what is behind it, to become aware what happened and when, in which situation. So basically, you know, in a training, in preparation, uh, we, we recall. So it, to, be in a, to be aware of all the situation, uh, we first detect, then recognize, aha, uh -huh, this is situation that can lead to something. To understand why is happening, to recall my training, to recall my responses, to recall uh, some, some, you know, uh, good training in a way how to handle negative behavior, how to handle uh, communication with the player, with the coach, and to act according with this preparation, according with the rules. Uh, okay, so basically if we say about this game control aspects, it's really important to understand the context and the situation that you are going to officiate. So the whole environment that you are going to officiate. Uh, what things in the environment are controllable and in what context the game is going to be played? Really important questions to answer. And which stressful situation can appear? all really important for the game control aspect because like we said before if you prepare for competition then you need to prepare for stressful emotional uh, situation that that may occur uh, also keep in mind the different context and different situation uh, can produce different behavior I will show you in a, in the next slide a few examples that you know uh, it's not uh, the same uh, if we the same person is playing in different contexts. But on the other hand, past behavior of the same person tends to be the best predictor for the future behavior in similar situations. For example, if you have a coach who is, uh, you know, coach who is really uh, have a negative reaction toward uh, any kind of restriction, for example, unsportsmanlike foul or technical foul to their player, to his players or her players, you, uh, his behavior uh, is also, if he, you know, for example, out of 10 games, eight games he reacts the same the great probability is that he or she will react also the same in the future okay so let's see how the context and the situation that you are going to officiate can have a great uh, deal of what what will happen and the different kind of behavior so uh, it's not the same if you if the players and coaches are competing at the international level than if they are competing in the in the MTG. It's not the same if the coach is uh, competing in the home court in final four or his visitor his team is a visitor in a regular season. 
It's not the same if uh, you are officiating, you know, uh, players who who are professional or players who are rec recreational. So these are the all things that you need to take in consideration when you are preparing for the for this uh, game control aspects. Uh, if we say, for example, let's say for from international or national level, uh, you have comparison between uh, mini basketball under 14, uh, uh, adolescent basketball under 17, and senior basketball, for example, pro level. Different context and different situations. And it's really important for you to be aware, okay, what can I expect during this game? Uh, what level Uh, regarding this that you all probably prepare for any game like it's like to be the best game that you can officiate no matter if it's final four or beginning of the season under 16 or, or pro pro uh, level senior but plus it's really important plus this it's really important to prepare of the context of the situation that you are going to officiate and officiating adolescents, what I find, especially during the under 17 World Cups and generally referees who, who you know, for example, during the season, they officiate uh, pro level men games and then are um, invited to do under 17 women games. Uh, the, mo some of them are not aware of the different context and different situation, especially different level of basketball. Uh, and for you, really important thing, also for the coaches in general, uh, adolescents are not young adults. Uh, they are a unique group with own characteristics and developmental stages on Also important thing for you regarding the preparation on what to expect. Uh, you can expect also many uh, emotional uh, energy, many emotional expressions that uh, sometimes are not so uh, controllable. And uh, from one, I will tell you one situation And you know, you know uh, that uh, if we expect uh, kids to behave like you know adult people, especially in the competition uh, environment, then we we are not prepared, uh, and we do not anything about their development. Um, it's really important also to accept that boys and girls react the same. Okay, sometimes it's cultural differences, you know, that they say, uh, I didn't expect that girl will swear, or I didn't expect that girl will show aggression. 
Uh, this is like, this is nothing uh, to do with the gender. This is more to do with their development stage and their uh, competition. You know, when you are losing, you tend to be emotional. When you are winning, you also tend to be emotional. And to understand this concept in a way of officiating adolescents, I really think it's, it's uh, really uh, important. And also, you know, um, respect their age, respect their uh, preparation and the effort they put in the game and be, I will say, even more professional when approaching with, to them and even more profession, professional when cor correcting, sanctioning uh, emotional uh, behavior. Okay, I will also give you one example later from the tournament. So I hope you 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 understand this uh, emotional uh, aspect of the uh, officiating uh, adolescents. Okay, also, you know, we in psychology we call this uh, almighty triangle. You know, <laughs> everything is connected our thoughts, our emotions, and our behavior. And, you know, you and the coach and the player, all the participants during the game, um, uh, they, they have, you know, uh, these thoughts during the competition that uh, affect how they feel and how will they play. Uh, the, their emotions uh, affect uh, how they think and how will they play their behavior affect on how they think for the for the future and how they feel and if you prepare uh, about this in a way of okay when i'm prepared for to expect this uh, in a way of self control in a way of self understanding uh, it will be uh, easier for you to keep this under control um, you know there is a there is a way in a uh, in a game uh, game control that is also game management and game control game control is more about keeping the competition under control because as you all know most of the times you cannot keep everything under control because everything outside of you is not controllable so other people behavior what other people think what will they do? they do? It's out of your control. But according to the rules and regulation, you can prevent some undesirable behavior to happen more often or more time in a row. So even if you give a technical foul to a, because of inappropriate behavior to specific coach or a specific player, that doesn't mean that they will stop uh, behaving uh, inappropriately. So this is this is also important for to understand. You cannot control everything, but uh, one of the most important thing to have in control is your triangle about this. Your thoughts, your emotions, and your behavior when uh, when facing stressful situation, when straight, when facing some specific. Uh, stressful situation, conflict situation uh, during the game, and uh, you will be then you will be able to, to keep the, the, your decisions under control, and therefore your body language, presenting it, how to present, and uh, how to maybe even influence on, on next uh, situation um, to be more calm, to play uh, according to the rules, and so on. Okay. Then, uh, when it comes to predicting behavior, this is also when we speak about preparation. Uh, you know, preparation is really important. 90% uh, of your performance, 90% of your officiating is about being prepared. The more you are prepared, the better you will officiate. The more you are prepared about the context, the more that you are prepared about who are you going to officiate with, uh, which teams, at which level, the significant of the significance of the game, you will be better. But also, it's important not to over prepare or not to uh, take some actions before they occur. Uh, what we call this, uh, we call this uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. 
self-fulfilling prophecies, you know, to expect, ah, I know this coach, he or she will be aggressive when I, when I uh, call something, you know, against uh, their team, and I will give them a technical. You know, and then you go to the game and then you just observe the coach and you expect his, his or her behavior uh, to occur. This is some, this can be really, uh, you know, uh, it can trigger also behavior for the, for the coach even before it happens. So be aware not to, uh, not to let self-fulfilling prophecy uh, overwhelm you know overtake control be, be aware of this you want to prepare but not jump uh, out of the conclusion and not to take some actions before they even uh, occur uh, also in uh, the important question and answer to uh, to have on this question is what purpose does behavior serve if we detect a purpose of certain behavior and the context in which it appears, we will understand it better. For example, the, here is a story, one story from the, from the real, real league, from the real coach and the real team. Um, certain coach, three years in a row, uh, during the final four, receives a technical every game. And his team, his club, needs to pay the penalty. You know, in some leagues, I don't know in, in Canada, in some leagues in Europe, there are certain fees for receiving a technical foul. I know for NBA and also in some leagues in Europe. So, uh, you know, and then when you prepare, now it's three years in a row, this coach loses final four, mostly because of his behavior. Now, we hope, <laughs> I hope that his team or he is uh, aware of this behavior and, and he is doing a really good self-analysis. If not, your job is to do uh, self-analysis of preparing for the game. For example, you are now officiating four years in a row, this coach, and he's at the same team. Uh, he's again at the final four. What can you expect? But again, do not act before the certain behavior occurs. You can expect him, maybe he work on himself to be more self-aware of his behavior. Maybe he, have, uh, he has worked on uh, how to regain self-control, um, how to establish uh, you know, good communication with the reference and so on. It's okay. But also, if he or she didn't do it, you need to be prepared that this coach maybe will become aggressive again when his team will start losing during the final four. Okay, one of the, you know, uh, I hear many referees and some referee instructors speaking about body language and speaking about how body language is really important. I totally agree body language presenting the signals, body language in IoT, body language in a communication, in a crew communication, it's really important because everybody can see. But uh, what, what uh, we in psychology know, what science show us, that facial expressions are more uh, detective about how people will behave or how they feel than body language. Um, facial expressions, you know, they don't lie. They are like uh, lie detectors. You know, you can, you can uh, train how to stay calm under the pressure, but micro expressions on your face can, can say either you are afraid, either you are uh, sad, happy, uh, uh, this, uh, feel disgust or so, whatever. I don't know if you are familiar with the TV show uh, Lie to Me. This is a TV show, Lie to Me. It, I think it has three seasons it, and it's based on a real psychologist, uh, emeritus psychologist, do, uh, Dr. Paul Ekman. 
And uh, his research is really, he, he worked a lot of many years with the FBI, with the NSA, you know, with uh, many uh, government organizations to, to, to train them, to train detectives and to train also the, um, the, their employees how to detect if someone is lying based on their facial expressions. So I think for you as a referee to recognize what player feel or how, what are they thinking in a way of how will they react, it's also good to, to recognize their uh, facial expressions also for your colleagues. You, you, there will be one, uh, one uh, example also with the crew communication and facial expressions. Uh, there are some cultural differences in where, in when these expressions are shown and how intensively. Uh, also, uh, you know, in a different, uh, as we all know, in different continents, people uh, express emotions differently, but not, uh, they express it differently in how intensively, but they all feel the same emotions. And, you know, in uh, some cultural context, yeah, and in some cultures, um, uh, girls should not be aggressive and boys should not cry, you know? And as I, as I go back to the, to the example that I gave you from under 17 uh, Women World Cup, the girl was okay, aggressive, but not aggressive, you know, if uh, the same way uh, her colleague, under 17 years old boy acted, there would not be any difference probably he would not receive a technical. But the referee was so surprised that the girl expressed her anger in, in a way that she complained, you know, just because she's like teenage girl and teenage girl should not be <laughs> show any, uh, any aggression. Uh, okay, then uh, emotions are prime, like I told you, emotions are primarily show in the face, not in the body. Body is, shows how we cope with the emotion, you know? How we cope with the emotion doing this, how we cope in emotion, you know, doing this, or, or you know, any other waving with the hands, demonstrating also uh, uh, with, with our body. Our face can also show us, show uh, us as referees how other people, in 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 a few seconds or in the next situation, uh, can uh, will behave. And uh, if I tell you, for example, uh, uh, experience from tournaments, my my main. Uh, my main responsibility and my main role during the tournaments, international tournaments, is to be with the instructors. For example, we have like, we are watching the game uh, in, on the court and uh, my, one of my main responsibilities is to observe. To observe the body language of the, of the referees, uh, how they, their facial expressions, how they present sanctions, do they get emotional when they present? And this is, you know, you can also be trained to, to recognize facial expressions from the players and for the coaches, because it can help you to be ahead of something that can happen, or it can help you to prepare for some possible um, undesirable behavior that can occur. So like I told you, be aware of facial expressions, also be aware of body posture and movements, body language, sound of the voice, uh, words they use and rhythm of the speech. Also, not just for the players and coaches, also, also for your colleagues. Uh, you, can, you can also, you know, um, during the timeout uh, or during the pregame, uh, based on this, uh, uh, you know, topic. Based on this, you can also uh, see: if, are your are your colleagues maybe afraid of the situation? Are they lost lost concentration? Uh, are they emotional? 
you know, and also be able to, to, to speak about this uh, if it's possible during the timeout to be aware, hey guys, now hey, we, we, we are getting emotional, we not need to calm down, we need to regain uh, control again, not to, to, to be eaten by the emotions, not to be eaten by the competition and so on. And uh, what, I what I always, when I have a chance, tell the referees when they prepare for the emotions, not, not just to prepare about aggressive behavior, but uh, be aware uh, of fear and contempt because these two emotions tend to lead to aggression. Because, you know, if in competition environment, those who are afraid to lose or those who are afraid that they will lose the game or a basket or whatever they can become aggressive and do something something that is inappropriate like unsportsmanlike foul like technical foul like disqualifying foul and whatever also those uh, coaches and players who feel contempt you know when you see the contempt on their face be aware, be, be more uh, aware how to communicate before this contempt uh, can escalate to, to some kind of aggression, to some kind of protest and so on. Um, when I speak about this, you know, with so many, with so many information about the behavior and emotion, um, uh, I think that when you, when you think now back for the game that you have, that you can recognize these informations uh, and, uh, and the, the situations that led uh, to this and uh, for you being a referee uh, alongside with the mechanics, with the 3PO, with the IoT, your body language, uh, uh, knowledge of the rules, knowledge of the basketball, uh, it's really important that uh, officiating psychology preparation for psychological part of the game uh, should be also included because it's it's huge part of the game this psychological part of the game like behavior emotion context uh, communication uh, what will happen how to observe to prevent and so on uh, in competition environment like I'll, I will always repeat this in competition because in competition there are so many stressful situations because both teams want to win and if we compete with somebody uh, there is there is 100% uh, there will be some kind of emotions and some kind of uh, stressful situations and which emotions and when when they will uh, occur, this is 100% sure. How intensively and in which way, it's important for you to, 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 to understand because if emotion appear, uh, appear, it's normal, but if they are too intensive uh, and they lead to undesirable behavior, then you need to sanction them according to the rules and in this way uh, uh, being able to, to, man to manage this and lead to game control. To understand it even better, when we speak about behavior, uh, we call this ABC of the behavior. It's always what happened before, in which situation, person does something, remember the coach that I told you, uh, it's in three years in a row, this coach is like overwhelmed with the situation of the final four and he cannot deal with it regularly, so he expresses demonstration, you know, high, uh, so he receives the technical foul, he uh, cannot lead his team uh, appropriately because it's too much for him, too much pressure. Uh, what is the person doing? And consequence, what happens after the person does it? What, do, what uh, purpose does behavior serve? So it's always about when we put behavior in the middle, what happened before, 
and what will happen, uh, happen after this. Uh, and when we speak about consequence, because the consequence is what you sanction if it's a behavior, uh, if uh, is undesirable behavior. Uh, about the consequence, there is always a reinforce and sanction. In, in officiating, we, doesn't have, we do not have uh, reinforcement of some behavior. For example, we don't have like uh, the team that has less uh, uh, technical fouls will receive uh, $500. We don't have this, you know, reinforcement to keep this team uh, doing nice behavior. Um, it's more like silent reinforcement not to give them, if they behave well, they're out of the technical fouls, they're out of the unsportsmanlike fouls, so in that, in that way. Uh, I know that uh, here in, uh, in Croatia, in uh, summer league in, in Dalmatia, in one region, there is a rule, a basketball, it's basketball summer league, like recreational, and they have a rule to uh, the team who has less technical fouls, uh, unsportsmanlike fouls, and uh, you know, less fouls in general, uh, uh, is able to donate, will receive, will receive some, some fee to donate to, to charity for the organization they want. So it, in this way, it's really, it's really nice. Okay, so when we speak about the consequence and the sanction, sanction is uh, immediate consequence of behavior that causes, causes that behavior to decrease in frequency. So sanction is like any foul, any technical foul, any unsportsmanlike foul, because if we uh, give unsportsmanlike foul, we expect that they will understand this is, this is not allowed we will sanction this. If, happen, if it happens again, we will sanction this. A traveling violation, if you repeat this again, we will sanction again. Uh, but uh, when we speak about uh, sanction in a way in officiating, it's really important that uh, occur immediately after the behavior that is not, uh, not, that is not uh, according to the rules. Uh, it's important for you to understand uh, it's not a form of vengeance or retribution it's a it's a rule so uh, my advice to you when uh, giving a technical foul it for you prepare that this is a normal rule as any other rule so when giving a technical foul because someone is over emotional and expressing it inappropriate way, in inappropriate way. Remind yourself, be as much as professional and calm when expressing it because for you, it should be a normal sanction like any other sanction, like violation 24 second or traveling or foul or whatever. Uh, and also for sanction, it should be it can serve as an example for others so that everyone else that this uh, behavior you will not tolerate. Also one uh, example from the uh, tournament, it was under 19 World Cup men and uh, instructors said and uh, instructors said at the last day of the preparation, instructors said, okay guys, now you are prepared. And remember, tomorrow is the most important, first day of the tournament is the most important day for you to set the rules, for you to set the standard of officiating, because the coaches will know what are we going to tolerate and what is not, uh, what are we not going to tolerate and what will be sanctioned. So this was really good uh, information. And in the first day of the tournament, when you expect eight more days to, to play, if you set the, the standard for the officiating um, for the next eight days, then you have no problem on the fifth or se sixth days with the behavior, usually you don't. But if the standard is, okay, one crew is officiating like this, the other game, different crew officiating like this, 
they, then you don't put the standard. Also during the season, also important uh, message during the season. For example, in your pre-season pre clinic, when you uh, know already who are going to be the coaches, uh, which teams are in the league, you can also think about to present uh, between of you, how are you going to put a standard on the first week of the season? So they know what to expect and any crew uh, that will officiate in the next week, on the other week, they, they will follow the standard. Okay, uh, delivery of the sanction, like I told you, try not to be emo emotional, even if you uh, sanction uh, emotions and behavior that are not accepted, like aggression, like complainment, like demonstration, and so on. And um, uh, also, you know, in a way of presenting the sanction, sanction can be also the warning. So probably, you know, all, all of you will never give a technical foul immediately. You know, okay, sometimes <laughs> it, it should be, but you know, mo most of the time you give a warning before you give a technical foul. This is also sanction. Warning is also sanction to, to that person that you're receiving a warning, be aware, hey, this is not tolerable. We will not tolerate this next time. If, this, if uh, you repeat this, there will be a technical foul. Okay. Some few recommendations, uh, use, uh, use your tone of voice to calm the authority, not arrogance. Remember, you are a judge, you, you are above the competition, you are above the emotions, above the behavior. Focus on the current situation. Do not sanction something that happened two minutes ago. Or if, for example, you, you remember this coach from the last game and then you said, okay, now it's mine. No, 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 this is not professional. And always uh, make a remark on current situation. When speaking in a way of professional sanctioning, you know, giving a warning, for example, be short, specific and professional. Coach, this is not tolerable. We will not tolerate this anymore. If it happens again, it will be sanctioned. Uh, be decisive and have a pre-planned response. Uh, also, what, uh, what I told you about imagery and visualization, you can uh, train, you can practice this. How are you going to be a calm when also giving a warning to aggressive coach or uh, giving a technical or giving a sportsman like uh, how? Um, you know, <laughs> like I told you about the preparation. Uh, Fortune favors the brave, but even more those who are prepared. Preparation, preparation, preparation. And uh, the more that you are prepared, the more you will be able to handle unexpected situation. Also because the game is live and sometimes, many times unexpected situations will happen. Okay, I will give you just a few examples about the, from the tournaments. Uh, from uh, post-game evaluation and performance analysis. Well, it was my pleasure to have the, the one of the most significant uh, evaluations and analysis also with your two of your great instructors, Nadine and Mike. So it, uh, one of these and two of these situations are also from our, uh, from our tournaments. And uh, post-game evaluation, from my side and from instructor side is always as part of learning experience, preparation for the next game, and your personal improvement and development. And what I always recommend to the referees, use video analysis as much as you can, because video analysis is objective. Your, uh, your uh, uh, self-evaluation about only based on your memory is subjective. It's, it's really subjective. But if you combine it with the video analysis of the game that you officiated, it will be a great because you will see what really happened and how was your body language, how did you behave, how did you manage everything, and also 
communication, communication with your crew and everyone else. Okay, so few, few I will tell you, uh, well, we spoke about emotional reaction, about uh, warning and technical and sport and foul. Uh, captain of the team, one really, uh, one good suggestion that I can give you, when you uh, thinking about game control aspects, uh, um, think about who is the emotional leader of the team. Sometimes captain is the best shooter of the team. He is the best player or she is the best player. But the team, real team who, who, who can influence the players on the court is some other, some other player and think about this, prepare to this because most of the time if you speak with this player, you can influence the other player through him or through her. She or he can help you to, to take the game uh, under control. Uh, female coach, male coach. Again, cultural differences about if he, female coach, protests. It's about because she's emotional, emotional. If male coach protests, is because he's losing. Think about this. Think about this bias that uh, we may have about female male emotional reactions because they are coaches they are both coaches don't think about their gender think about what they can lose if they lose this game maybe they can lose their payment maybe they can lose the championship whatever it's not about the gender because female and male coach uh, express the same emotions but sometimes we are not used to see that female is like waving the hands. Get used to this because she is also coach. She is also competing and want her team to win. Uh, also what I told you about young girls and young boys. Young girls are allowed to show emotions and, and be aware of this. And don't sanction them just because you are not expected for them to, to behave like this. It's your problem that you didn't expect, but there is right to, to show the emotions. Uh, uh, not uh, in the, in the rate, rule, uh, according to the rule and according to the intensity that is allowed to, to show. Uh, yeah. Crew communication about uh, during the tournaments, uh, sometimes maybe during for you uh, uh, from different regions, what happened in one of one international tournament? It was under 17 girls, and um, we we observed uh, also sometimes we if we have a chance sometimes we observe the the referees before the game how they prepare for the game the crew and so on, and uh, during the tournaments referees sometimes uh, enter the game you know uh, one hour before so they sit and watch the game before and so on. In one situation, uh, 3PO and the two referees were really good with each other, you know, chatting, um, communicating. And the third partner, the third uh, referee was uh, two or three meters behind them sitting in the next row. And he felt a little bit, you know, like, I'm sad, I'm now alone two of them like chatting. It was visible from his body language and from his facial expressions that he is not part of the team. And then game started and the crew teamwork was really bad. And uh, after the game, we spoke about uh, with the crew. What do you think? How did you prepare? What was the pre-game about and so on? And these two, these two uh, said everything was good, we prepared, da, 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 everything was good. And then we asked them, okay, but what about uh, waiting for the game? And they were thinking about, oh yes. And you know, they, did, they were not aware that they left him on the side. They, they, they two of them did not include them, uh, him uh, in conversation. And he was also one of the context. He was the youngest uh, guy in the team, 
And these two also knew each other from, from previous tournaments, from previous games. Uh, maybe it, for you, maybe in the first, it cannot be so much significant, but think about it can be so much significant for you, uh, how, to, how you uh, going to the game with, with all of your uh, two colleagues, that they uh, feel like they're uh, part of the crew from the beginning, even before the pregame. Uh, important thing. So to be aware about um, all the as aspects of the game, all the aspects of the behavior, also your own and of your crew. So this is from my point of about, I would try, I wanted to, to, to um, give you few important informations about the game control aspects from behavior and emotional part of the game. Uh, I hope you understand it, understood it. Uh, I will be happy to answer your question if there are any. And also thank you very much again for, for inviting me. Thank you, Nadine, CBOC. And uh, I hope <laughs> you, you will have some questions about my presentation. Enjoy officiating our beloved game in any circumstances, we hope it will be good uh, at the beginning of the season that we are all be able to, to, to enjoy uh, basketball. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Dubravka. I, um, I, I know that um, I allowed <laughs> us to go into overtime. A <laughs> uh, referee should never allow anything to go into overtime, but I thought that this was a good opportunity to do so, and the drinks are on me after. Um, so thank you very much. <clears throat> Some uh, great, great um, information. Uh, also brought back a lot of great memories. Um, <laughs> but we do have a few questions. Okay. And I'm going to, to ask a few questions. Um, and we're also going to hear a bit uh, from Mike Thompson, our referee manager. Um, Mike, do you want to go before or after the questions? Oh, after the questions. After. Excellent. Okay. So, I have a few questions. All right. Yeah. And um, uh, what I will do is I will also send you the questions. Okay. So that there can be a more fulsome response to them. We only have time for sort of quick responses. Okay. okay. But I'll send them to you. Then what I'll do is I'll post the answers to the questions. All right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. So um, one of the first questions we had was, you know, you spoke about resiliency. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so one of the officials, and, and I'm always interested in this too, is, you know, how to practice or develop these resiliency skills on our own. Do you have mm -hmm. one or two tips as to how we as referees mm -hmm. could, could mm -hmm. work on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, well, this is uh, during this situation of the COVID-19, <laughs> it's really good chance to, to train your resilience because it's stressful situation. We don't know what to expect. We don't know how long we will going to, uh, to take us to, to back to, to normal life and so on. And in, if you compare it with the preparing for the game, it's quite similar. You know, when you, as a referee, prepare for the game, you don't know what will happen, uh, who is going to win, how will game end and so on. But either way, you prepare and you prepare also for, for overtime. Uh, if we compare this with, if I, if I now speak about resilience in a way of uh, uh, thinking about resilience, it's about being able to bounce back from stressful situation that can happen to you. Mm -hmm. So in a way, how is this possible? Uh, one of the things that I can tell you, it's about uh, be aware that you can only control what is controllable you can control how are you going to react to any stressful situation uh, how are you going to behave in any stressful situation are you going to find the solutions for possible problem or you are going to to only think about the problem so finding the so solutions for anything that happened uh, controlling the controllable focus on things that matter for you 
for from your uh, you know uh, in a way of your personal life the, the situation that happens and so on and share your thoughts and share your fears uh, uh, even if situation that happen with others with your friends with your family uh, with your colleagues uh, if we speak about referee resilience uh, I would like to compare with the with, uh, um, firemen and pilots and surgeons. They all face really stressful situations, but they are trained for them. And if stressful situation happen to them, some problem, they share with their colleagues immediately. Why? Uh, because it helped them to, to speak about this. They receive feedback from their college colleagues. Uh, don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid, it, it happened also to me. It happened also to me. I also feel, felt this. Uh, I was also in a similar situation. Then they can give you some solutions, but also it helped you to see that you are not alone in the situation that happened. And for example, you had a really bad game and you probably would like to not speak to anyone and nobody that nobody wants to know about this game but if you speak with your colleagues with your mentor with instructor to share them what what happened uh, why happened then you will for sure after a few people speaking with uh, five six seven people you will feel better because they can also be, be your uh, support, but also give you some solutions, how to cope with this and so on. But most of the um, important things is, uh, is about you, to focus on the things that matter, focus on solutions, focus on your responses, mm -hmm. uh, on things that you can control. And, and uh, uh, always remember, there are 90% uncontrollable things in our life, you know, anything that happened around us, it's not uh, in, uh, under our control, but how we react on what happening around us, it's uh, on our control. And uh, life is about uh, five days of problem and two days of happiness, <laughs> going in circle. <laughs> every day is some new struggle, every day is some new situation that we need to face with and uh, there is a really good uh, saying that you know when you face the problem then you say okay i did it i survived i'm still alive when you face difficult game uh, and it passed you and you did a good analysis and then you learn from it but you are still officiating you are still alive nothing bad happened yeah and I think it's something that's important that you talked about is preparation. And a yes. huge part of preparation is emotional preparation. Yes. How can we emotionally prepare ourselves for the difficult conversations and mm -hmm. difficult situations or experiences that you may have in a game? Mm -hmm. And those difficult conversations could come right after, even before the ball's tossed or mm -hmm. just after mm -hmm. the ball's tossed, mm -hmm. but a lot of times we avoid them. And so part of, you know, preparation is how do I want to show up? Yes. How do I want to show up? How do I want to be? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's really helpful. So thanks yeah. for that. I have another question. Um, how would you deal with a mini ball coach who's acting like he's coaching the world championships? You know, really competitive nature and, mm -hmm. you know, aggressive demands with it, his or her uh, mm -hmm. kids like you know and mm -hmm. do we even have to deal with that and that's the that's that's yeah. the part that I add to this but um you know how do you yeah. how do you deal with that or how do you deal with your own emotions around that yeah yeah it's probably you know it's also against your values because you know hey kids are just going to want to play it's not up to you it's about the kids you know uh, leave them play uh, it's uh, again uh, what can I First, if I officiate uh, like under 40 or under 12, uh, I can also be a role model for these kids. You know, in a way, how will I react on their, how will I present them some rules, how will I 
communicate with them and so on. Mm -hmm. Also, in a way, how will I communicate with the coach that is, you know, too much into the game and, like I said, it's, it's real serious for him or for her. Uh, also, communication uh, before the game or even communication before the season with the, with the coaches to present them, okay, how are we going to have, a, a, I would say, um, standard? What, what, what we expect, like maybe not the referees, but the league, what we expect uh, from this season in under 14 uh, league, uh, these are our officials, these are our coaches, how can we uh, present this game to be the best experience for our players? It's not about us, it's about the players. What I found, a lack of communication uh, before the season between the referees and coaches can lead to this. And the leagues that have really good communication between, I don't know, three referees, representative of the referees and representative of the coaches meets and they have a discussion about what to expect, uh, what they want to you know, achieve uh, and so on. Sometimes the new rules, maybe this season probably you know, a lot of discussion about the new rules and so on. I think the, uh, alongside with the preparation, my preparation, how will I deal with this? It's uh, open communication with the coaches, uh, the, uh, the league that I'm going to officiate. And uh, in many leagues, in many countries, there is a lack of communication between these two, these two mm -hmm. important participants, yeah. coaches okay. and referees. Thank you. Have you seen female games refereed differently than male games? Um, whereas, you know, the aggressive play language uh, complaining isn't tolerated as much in the female game as it is in the male game. And I think you touched on this a bit with mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. you know, some of the post game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not so much because not, uh, referees are more and more uh, educated, I will say. Referees are more and more aware Again, it's sometimes it's maybe about the culture, you know, specific culture is a different and so on. But uh, not so many times that this was issue about, you know, uh, referees officiating different to female and male. Uh, what, what, I, what I hear from referees when they prepare, if they are um, most of the time officiate female games, but sometimes they receive uh, also men game. They prepare for the fa for the fastest game. Okay. They need to prepare to be mo uh, faster movements. They, they, this is what they they are now more aware. Okay. Uh -huh, I'm officiating female games, but on Sun on Wednesday on Sunday officiating uh, men. Okay, I need to prepare for the faster, stronger movements uh, because the, I don't know, the level of the game and so on. But uh, in a way of emotions, uh, they are, tend to be more educational a way of a, uh, don't, don't think about the gender, think about the behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the Very important. In <laughs> That's right. That's yes. right. All right. Um, Another question, many pre-games include, you know, talking about historical behavior of coaches mm -hmm. and players. Mm -hmm. um, how can we as referees be aware of, of these tendencies and not have a bias or predetermined mm -hmm. response to these individuals? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's to prepare about solutions if the tendency, if the past behavior repeat again, but to, to go in the game with open mind. So at the one, one time, I always say you have it in a pocket. You have some file, you have some file prepared. So you have many solutions in your file, in your memory. You can visualize, visualize it as a pocket or as a USD or whatever. And then you are prepared, uh -huh, because like we spoke, this is psychology past behavior tends to be the best predictor about the future behavior in the similar situation, in the similar, but different context and different situation can lead to different behavior from the same person. Uh, so I prepare that this coach or this player used to do flop, for example, this player tend to do flopping, okay? 
and uh, some referees go to the game and just search for the flopping. You know, they are like, okay, I expect now you to do it. And sometimes they even act before uh, this happens and they can provoke uh, complainment or whatever. But pre prepare for the situation that this that can, uh, in which can occur, the, the player doing the flopping, but go open-minded to think, okay, this player maybe learn how to avoid flopping, flopping. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's, a, uh, it's about prepare for the sanction if it happens, but go with the open mind that maybe also this player learns something and prepared for the game. That's right. So, yeah. so basically it's about watching, listening, yes. Um, observing <laughs> observing yes and once you gather all that information it's like watching a play from abc yes. once you gather that information yes. then you have to process it and decide how you're going to respond yes. so yes. that's great thank you um you know there uh, it's interesting what you talked about here and um you know maybe maybe a consideration for us at the cboc is having a little piece around this but also normal youth you know growth and development normal developmental stages what to mm -hmm. expect what not mm -hmm. to expect mm -hmm. um you know and you know um maybe more around pre-gaming you know i know in my pre-games of junior high school and senior high school are different because you know you're going to see different things so we need to really yes. focus on some of those yes. things so i yes. think that is something that we are going to incorporate in into our Super. training Thanks. yeah so and also and also one information for you for for uh, you and mike as instructors in in fiba will be uh, uh, together fiba uh, with me uh, we we were editing now the chapter in the mental preparation menu we editing mm -hmm. chapter about uh, officiating adolescents so okay. when the i will send you but it will be on our platform and okay, then excellent. you can share then you can share with your reference we will do that thank you thanks for that uh, Dubrovka, um, I'm going to pass it over to Mike right now, but you know how <laughs> I feel. I'm, I'm super thankful for you sharing this time with Thank us. You. Thank um, you. It was my pleasure. Every time I talk to you, uh, I, you know, learn something more, taken a lot of notes, uh, read your book too. So, uh, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of orange stickies in the book. <laughs> um, so that's great. So thank you very, very much. Um, Mike, over to you. Hey, Dean. So uh, for everybody on the call, certainly want to thank everybody for taking some time on their Sunday uh, to be with us. Uh, this growth as a basketball referee is really about lifelong learning and it's continuous learning. But, but if you listen to some of the things that Dubrov talked about here today, um, there's an opportunity to apply them in life. She, took, she talked about five days of problems and two days of happiness. But I think in those five days, um, there was an awful lot Dubrovka said today that can be brought in there. I know I wrote down a number of things, Dubrovka. I, I love the piece about the 90% is about being prepared. Uh, it's something as referees, I always argue, is as referees, we don't get a chance to practice. And we don't practice, which means we don't prepare the same way teams do. It's something we have to bring into our training. We in Canada, we need to spend more time having conversations between referees and coaches and getting the, the groups together so that we're on the same page. Um, I love the fact that uh, you spoke about adolescents are not young adults. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we have an obligation to adjust our training to do something mm -hmm. a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Come back to Dubrovka in a minute. I wanna say thank you to Rike and Gabby who've looked after the technology today. Uh, sent out the notices of the webinar, uh, tracked attendance, and made it available. Certainly, my thanks go out to Nadine for setting this up. Um, but Dubrovka, we thank you greatly for bringing your thoughts to us today. Um, I have a copy of your book sitting here. Uh, it is dog-eared. It is marked. I've noted all sorts of things. <laughs> I am definitely stealing all sorts of things from it as we get into training in the fall. And uh, it's something that um, everybody can learn from. But strikingly, when Dubrovka said, 
adolescents are not young adults. I think if you've got an adolescent in your family, having a look at Dubrovka's book would actually help them to understand the world in a better way. And it's written in a, it's written in a, in, in a, in a fashion that is quite simple and straightforward and, and very easy to incorporate the ideas. Um, Dubrovka, uh, it's been great to see you on video today. Uh, it has been a while since we've been in the same city together. I hope that opportunity occurs soon, but I want to thank you. I know it's late in the evening uh, in your hometown now, and I know it's a beautiful town with some great scenery outside. So um, hopefully we haven't kept you inside at the wrong time of the day and the weekend, but <laughs> no. greatly appreciate you being here. Thank you to everyone to be here. Um, we will have an announcement soon about our next seminar. It will actually be in French on, on August 19th. Uh, and then we'll do some work on some future training, but we're going to take a little bit of a small break um, from the cadence of these CBOC presentations at the moment. And uh, everybody, please enjoy uh, the next few weeks. Uh, we think the world is on an upward trajectory. We're starting to see improvement around the world. And hopefully we're getting just a little bit closer to all being back on the floor, on the court, and actually having a game. And if you ever get a chance, to invite Dubrovka to your game and have her around to have a look. The feedback that she provides officials in this training and after the games is so helpful to their growth. It's very valuable. Dubrovka. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very Thank you. much. <laughs>